what's up fellas today we're doing a diesel test the temperature to beat with our propane run was 2663 degrees and it took us a half hour to get to that point the temperature was steadily rising at 30 degrees every five minutes i also want to thank everybody for the comments that have been being left in the videos lately i mean we're like completely dick joke free over there man a lot of very good information it's like a wealth of information in these comments and i applaud you guys for leaving good input great attitudes out there man and some really good information and that's one of the most valuable places to find information on youtube is in the comment section you can always tell when you find that one guy who knows what the hell he's talking about he's shining for some reason i don't know what it is about the truth that you can feel it when you hear it all right, fellas, I tell people this all the time, and for some reason I continually break my own damn rules. Once you get the thing lit a little bit, you want to let it just sit there and warm up. If you go jacking around with it before that combustion chamber gets hot, it's a lot more prone to a flame out when you adjust the air fuel ratio. It can't handle much tampering in that condition. See there, I just suffered a flame out. Had I let that thing get a little hotter before I did anything, that doesn't happen. I'm just in a huge rush as usual, but for the most part, just keep that in mind. If you let the thing warm up before you do any major adjustments, you're going to be far less flame outs like that. It's not really a big deal, but it certainly doesn't look very graceful. I got something going on with my air. There's a clog. Oh man, that is so hot. You see, we do have molten glass. I'm not gonna take that out because I wanna fix the air situation. I think some oil may have gotten in to the airline. And uh, fouled out my burner there or something I'm gonna to have to put an oil separator on this for some reason our pressure is getting up to 125 psi's which indicates I may have something fouled up inside of here some oil from the airline or something has gotten in there and clogged us up at the aperture so we're gonna take a quick look at that but uh, in the meantime my observations are showing that the diesel is not getting as hot wow check that out another big goob of it it is pretty molten stuff it's just straight dripping Okay, Sean, so I'm doing this video to show you what I found inside the nozzle here. See this crud that came up through the airline, I think? I think this might have come out of my air dryer that I had hooked up to this thing. You can see we're just loaded with um, some dirt that had got in there. This thing's got a lot of hours on it. We've done a lot of testing with it. So I just wanted to show you how I took this apart, 
found the dirt. We had a pressure drop. This thing should be running around 100 PSI back pressure or about 75 PSI back pressure. I take that back. And we were getting into the... Oh, look at that dirt there. Yeah, so there's some gump coming through the line, through the airline. So this is just a lesson. See that there? That might have come out of my air dryer. Definitely some, some buildup inside of there. Another thing that it might be is from the oil and water mixture that travels through the airline. Okay, Sean, so essentially this is what's traveling through the air system continuously. You see that oily spray? So what's happening is, is that's flash boiling inside of this line and carburizing the oil, which is causing particles to clog up the system. So we're gonna be introducing an air separator, or oil separator, I'm sorry, to clean out this gunk. So what we'll do, fellas, is we'll incorporate this inline oil separator to take all that gunk out of there before it goes into the inline dryer. The arrangement we're gonna to wanna to look at, this would be the best way to do it. Laying it on its side would be okay, I guess, but uh, I had the parts, so why bother? We're just gonna do this and run the unit like that. This out, get us back up and running. So far, um, things are going good. I just wanted to show you this because this is something you might have to do after a long 12 hour run if you've got a dirty airline. This thing just comes right apart. You have two washers going directly up against the burner here. And then it just bolts onto the side there. But uh, yeah, I'm going to clean this up, blow it out with some air, and get us back on the road on the diesel test. We started to lose temperature also, and I was wondering, man, what is going on? We, we stopped, and then I checked the air pressure, and sure enough, we've had, got this little clog here. Whatever that stuff right there might be. All right, fellas, when it comes time to running the Fords, there's some important details to pay attention to. You see the fire shooting out the top there? That you don't want to see. You're going to bring it back down to where it's just barely coming out at all. Not only is it a waste of fuel, but there's some other operating conditions. Check this out. That's pulse jetting that can take place if you add too much fuel, and it could possibly damage the foundry lining. So we don't want to let it run like that. It is extremely hot, but it basically turns the whole thing into a pulse jet engine because of the small size of the cavity is resonating with the configuration of the burner. We don't want to let it do that. The hottest flame is going to be when you get it to where it's just inside the throat there. You can't reduce it too much because then it also starts to act weird. The diesel's a different beast. Look at the preheat we're getting on that monster. Things are getting heated up nice. We are at white hot temperatures within minutes on this thing. Look at that. Well, I think my camera just missed that. The GoPro strikes again. I don't think it was recording. Um, we did get a pour there out onto this plastic or this metal. You can see we are liquid. Hopefully the GoPro caught that. This thing has a bad habit of just shutting off in the middle of stuff. Um, I'm not a fan of the Hero. This is the Hero Black. But we got a good melt in a half hour. We used a half gallon of diesel fuel. Unfortunately, this thing did not get that, I don't think. We had a good pour. I was hoping the camera caught it. We topped out at 2,613 degrees. The last temperature I took was 2,595, so I went ahead and shut the test down. I got to go run and grab some supplies. So, we're going to try this again, I think, on waste oil and see what temperature we get on that. All right, let's take a quick look at this data set. This is the propane figures. You can see how we were steadily climbing. We stopped the test after an hour. We were on a steady increase of temperature there. We could have went higher, but... I had to stop the test after an hour. This is the diesel stats on the first test. We had a problem with the airlines. Um, oil that gets into the water that comes through the airlines had carburized inside the airline preheater. And we had to restart the test. You can see here, 
we did manage to hit 2600 degrees and at that point um, I went ahead and stopped the test the last temperature I took was 2595 and we're gonna need some insulation on this thing this crucible did hold up a little bit better but once again we have burnt out all of the graphite I don't know enough about these things to determine whether or not this is an actual accurate means of measuring temperature. The label burnt off of this side. It had a label just like this. We got a little hot there. Doesn't take long. But um, it would appear that propane is hotter by not much I think that's got a lot to do with the amount of air you can cram in to the propane combustion the IR coming off the crucible and the foundry is so powerful that it caught my gloves and my channel locks on fire instantly so regular welding gloves are not going to cut it for this glass samples This here had only been in like eight minutes. So the exterior of the forge is getting extremely hot, like, or the foundry, I'm sorry. I think I was getting temperatures in the 600 degree range. So if we wrap this thing in insulation, we could get probably another 300 degrees out of this thing. Maybe four. I'm going to have to do some testing with different settings. I have not had time to do that yet. Dialing in the torch at different settings is, is going to give us a different flame temperature. You can't just have it set at any old setting. And I didn't have time to mess with that much today. I just wanted to get it set at a particular rate to observe the fuel consumption.